Welcome to chapel. Lord Alpha Yahweh Omega Yeshua. Shield! Logos. El Shaddai. Christos. The Truth. Lamb of God. Friend. Savior. Small Catechism says that the right way to use God's name is to call upon it in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give thanks. The invocation and the sign of the cross begins the chapel by calling upon God, who, through the power of the Holy Spirit and baptism, calls us to faith in Jesus. When we call, he comes to be with us, giving us his wonderful gifts of salvation. We open the chapel and by my name of the Father and my Son of the Holy Spirit. Dear God, thank you for this fantastic day for chapel where we get to learn more about you. We ask you that throughout this chapel you will help us recognize that you sent your son Jesus to be our savior. You love us so much that you have given us eternal life with you through our Son. Thank you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Psalm 67 lets us draw our attention to the grace of God. Please read responsibly along with us. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us.
20, God reveals the Ten Commandments to Moses. Take a few minutes with your class and talk about what the Ten Commandments are. Do you know them all? Which ones do you know? The mirror. Something most of you use every morning. Check yourself out a little bit. Make sure every hair is placed in the right position. Do your makeup. Make sure the zits aren't as red. Try on the mask. Oh, it covers the zit. That's a win. Mirror. The object we use to look at ourselves. A reflection. Today, we're taking a look in the Bible. We're using it as our mirror, as we reflect on ourselves through the law, and we are very thankful for the gospel. When we look at ourselves and we read the Bible, it's not pretty. We are not pretty. We are very, very thankful that we have a savior, the only savior, Jesus. The law teaches us God's will for how we live, namely the Ten Commandments. God's law demands perfection, but it is impossible to be perfect. According to the law, we are sinners and are in big trouble with God. We need someone to save us. The law shows us our sins. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6 verse 1. I lied to my parents about getting all of my homework and chores done. I didn't tell my parents the whole truth about what happened at my friend's house last weekend. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, verse 12. Why did we ignore her? We could have asked her to, to sit with us at lunch, but we didn't want her to. You shall not commit adultery. Exodus 20, verse 14. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Philippians 2 verse 3. The only reason we won that game is because of me. I made those big plays. Without me, I don't think the team would have won. I did the majority of the group project. There were only a few things that the other members did. I thought it was only fair that I said something about all the work I did. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Matthew 5, verses 21 and 22. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor's. Exodus 20, verse 17. When I go to their house, they just have everything. The best bike, the best backyard, the best room, the best everything. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 22, verse 36. I also love sports, my friends, my phone, and technology. Without those things, I would be bored. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, verse 39. Confessing our sins is important. When we confess them, we see just how terribly sinful we are. We also know that sin brings us nothing but eternal death and separation from God. When we confess our sins, not only do we see that we are sinful, but we admit to God that we deserve death and separation from Him forever. We are free to admit all of this to Him because we know that Jesus has already died and paid for all our sins. Please join me in confessing our sins. Lord, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
After confession comes absolution or the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus, we have the sure and true promise of forgiveness of sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The gospel tells us what Jesus has done to save us from our sins, but the gospel doesn't stop there. It tells us what Jesus continues to do for us because of his great love for us. The gospel shows us our Savior, Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Romans 6, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
position, the stone that was rejected by you, the builder, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly, through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. I am the Lord, and beside me there is no sin. Isaiah 43, 11. Good morning, Faith Luther Middle School. This is Mr. Cody, your assistant principal. What an honor and privilege it is to speak to you this morning in chapel about Jesus, our Savior. When you think of the word Savior, you think of someone who delivers or rescues you from danger. Certainly Jesus does that with his death on the cross and resurrection on Easter morning. I found a short little video clip that I'd like you to watch in which a baby is hanging from a balcony and is rescued and saved. Uh, What an incredible video and rescue of a person who had such great determination, focus, and strength to climb that balcony to save and rescue that baby from great danger and death. You know, it reminds me of the parable from Luke chapter 15 in the lost sheep. I want to read a couple of those verses for you. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. See, all of us get lost. We all mess up. We sin. We make mistakes. But Jesus doesn't leave it at that. And God sent his son to save us from our sins. And that's why he's called Savior. You know, I'm reminded of my mistakes and mess ups in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, which says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But again, God has an answer in Jesus in John chapter 10 verse 11 it says this I am the good shepherd referring to Jesus the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep you know I saw saw a really cool zoom background the other day it's a math problem that Mr. Pullman had posted in his zoom meeting the other day and I just thought it was really cool I wanted to share it with you check it out that is the greatest math problem of all time one cross three nails equals four given you know, Jesus, our Savior, rescues us from our biggest problem, sin, but he also provides for our daily struggles here on earth. So when you're tired and stressed, remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And when you're sad and alone, remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28. I am with you always to the very end of the age. And when you're afraid and uncertain, remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 14. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, our Savior. Be with us this day. Guide and protect us. Help us to be a light for you. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Have a great day, Faith Lutheran. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for being here with us in chapel today as we learn more about you as our Savior. We give thanks to you for sending your son to die for us and taking away the sins of the world. Thank you for letting us attend school, whether it be online or on campus. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. The benediction is God's blessing to the congregation given at the very end of the service.
Now hear God's blessing from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a good day, Fifth